What is up? So we are going to jump in and do a Freddy Krueger piece because it's the spooky season. And we're actually going to start out doing color flats today. Normally I just jump right in and do the color rendering, but by request uh, we're going to go ahead and just start from the beginning and go over how to do color flats and go from there. Oh, nice. How's that working out for you? Yeah, it, it takes a little bit because the, the way the, the nib kind of glides across the screen is a little bit of an adjustment. So, do you know what color flatting is at all, or why it's done? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um, to elaborate on that a little bit, here. So, color flatting is you, you take an image. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just draw you know, a couple circles like this real quick. This is going to be a down and dirty crash course for you. So you have your images and what you're going to what uh what it, what you do is you select colors. And at this point it does not matter whatsoever what colors you select when it comes to digital art you know if you're flatting on traditional art you know it, of course it matters because you can't really go back and change that but you just trace the black lines or the line art I'm doing a real down and dirty job here for you. Of 
course, anytime, my pleasure. So this is color flatting, okay? You're getting down. Yeah, I have, I've never used Procreate, but I know you can drag and drop color, like, you know, using your, your bucket tool and stuff like that. You know, go like that and so forth. Um, I, I believe there might be some adjustments you need to make in order to make sure that it goes all the way to the line, stuff like that. But regardless, the whole point of color flatting is that you have these colors that are abutted. So you see right here you have the red and the blue and they're, they completely touch. You need that to happen for printing reasons because when you when a comic book is being printed it's on a machine I mean we have a lot of digital stuff now but where they would have to press the different plate colors and if those colors if those plates shifted at all and you didn't have these colors touching you'd end up with weird gaps so that's where color flatting kind of started out the reason why we do it now is for clean selection because now that I have these as a colorist, I would hire a color flatter to do this for me. That way, when I get it, and I just need to make any adjustments, I have quick selections. So all I have to do is click in this area, or click this color here, and go, well, this one's actually supposed to be green, so we'll make that one green. I can click here, make it, you know, whatever color I need and it allows for quick selection between those that way as you're moving through the art piece if you need to make any adjustments or correct anything you can select solely what you need also if I click let's say this green one here now that I have the green one selected if I want to go in and do any shading since it's selected, I don't have to worry about coloring over anything else because it's only going to select that color. So that's kind of a crash course. On color flatting. Cool, I'm glad. Hopefully that's uh, as clear as mud. <laughs> And another important thing with color flatting that I forgot to mention that is very key is you want to make sure that you are not using any anti-aliasing. So what anti-aliasing is if you're unsure? So right now this is not anti-aliased. So if I zoom all the way in, you can see all of the jagged pixel edges. So since you can see all of those crisp pixel edges, that means it is not anti-aliased. Now on the inverse, if I was to, well, let's bring that back use anti-aliasing. I'll show you. This one is being has anti-aliasing. And if you zoom in here, you don't have those sharp pixel edges because what it does is it automatically tries to smooth everything out so you don't have jagged edges, which is great for any other time other than color flatting because these are all technically different shades 
of whatever color I put down. So in this instance, to shades of gray. So when I go and I fill in this color, uh, Frankie, what'd you do? Half a second here. There we go. So when I fill in this color here, the anti aliased one, it fills all the way to the rim. But if I go to the one that's aliased, and I go to fill that in, and we zoom in, since it feathers and smooths those edges, if we zoom in, it actually doesn't fill in everything, because those are technically different colors. So that creates a bit of an issue, and it can start to make your work look really choppy, especially when you have multiple colors and multiple layers going on. So that's why when you're doing color flatting, you want to make sure that you have your anti-alias turned off. And hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I remember when I, when I first started getting into digital art, and I had notes all over the place. Not, not only on, you know, what to do art-wise, you know, like anti-aliasing and, you know, the tools within the programs, but just learning a new program in general. Like, you're using Procreate. I use Clip Studio Paint, so it took forever just to get the ins and outs of what the program can do and but once you get a hang of it you really only need just a real base understanding to get up and going and, and I know that you have that I've seen that when you when you showed me uh, last weekend what you were working on we seem to have a, a decent understanding of the base functions of the program so that's good you'll get there it just takes time the good thing is that with most art programs, I would say 85, 90% of it, it translates to other programs.
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know plenty of professional artists that swear by procreating. I mean, the ease of access, you know, being 10 bucks is just fantastic. Oh, sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, uh, I'll say I'm not too good at gathering people for my live streams. I should be better about it. <laughs> but I record all of these, so... Most of the time, people like seeing the time lapses and stuff like that, which is fine. Cool. Yeah, it's totally a pain. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah, I, I'm lacking things that are uh, emotional. Like anger, or I, I don't remember what I have on my list exactly. I think anger is one of them. But uh, that was pretty easy, especially with, you know, comic book art. Someone's always angry about something or whatever. But, <laughs> but the more in-depth emotions just are not there yet. I'm, I'll find something. And if you, if you end up doing something, that would be great. So this is the first step in the color flatting. I actually usually do everything in a, a neutral color, like this gray, and then I'll save it. And I will do the rest of the flatting on another layer. And I'll usually label this my silhouette layer. That way I can go in and at any time I can select just the entire image. on another layer, I'll go in and start doing the rest of the flats. This can be a bit of a time-consuming bit of a tedious process sometimes which is why colorists when we're working on a deadline we tend to hire this job out to folks um, just because that's you know time that I don't have to spend doing this part and if I can pay someone 10 or 15 dollars to just do it for me then I can get it and I can just focus on the actual color rendering portion
cool. What'd you send me? Oh, nice. I like that a lot. So back on color flatting, um, overlapping and working from the large chunks inward is the way to go. See, I, I have, I've been kind of haphazard like with the glove and with his face and let the lines overlap. And the reason I did that is just so when I go back in to like a portion like this and I start to do the hat, I can put that brown that I'm doing for the hat right on the line and when we remove the line art you can see that the colors are absolutely touching there's no gaps This image of Freddy is pretty cool. The uh, long hair is th throwing me for a loop. Freddy normally has pupils. He has eyes, but these are just white. So that'll be interesting how how that'll look in the end. Yeah, that was my first time popping into uh, the artist jam there. Uh, do you know, do you know any of the staff there? So uh, one of the guys that works there, his name is Ryan. Uh, I actually work with him and have for the last seven years. That's his second job is at Krypton. And he told me about it um, like a, about a year and a half, two years ago. And I, I just never had the time. And then, and then COVID hit and doing stuff like that online was just not on my priority list or whatever, but but yeah, going in was was awesome. It was great to meet you and Fred. I'm looking forward to going back uh, again some other time. I don't know if I'm going to make the one next month. That's towards uh, you know the end of the month, so Thanksgiving and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you and Fred were were great. You know, uh, 
Ryan introduced me to you guys, and I just kind of just started talking to you guys, but nobody else came over. I felt like I'd have to walk over to them and start a conversation, and my social anxiety, my social anxiety was just not wanting to go do that at that time <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah you know a little bit of direction and well a sense of camaraderie and and uh you know being being kind of a team or a, or a unit you know would be would be great there needs to be uh i think something like uh to unify everybody whether that's you know some sort of competition, like a friendly competition, or, um, yeah, like, you know, putting up some direction, or, uh, you know, decoration or images or something like that, you know, would be cool, because then that's something you get, everyone can do as a, as a collective, you know, decorate their own space and bring people together a little. See, I just noticed something. This happens sometimes with uh, line art. Wait, you don't notice, like, if you didn't draw the piece and you're just getting it to color, you'll start to notice things that you didn't notice at first because, you know, it's all just line art. Like, I had thought that this whole section here was kind of his neck. Like, you know, he had a bit of a waddle to his neck or whatever. But now that I'm coloring it, it's actually his sweater just being frayed and tucked up under his chin. Like that. That would be cool, you know, kind of feature someone in the group a little bit. That would be cool. Uh, Fred seems like a cool dude. Um, he's going to try and get me some line art for uh, No Render, so I'm pretty stoked about that. He's sitting, getting set up for uh, Nebraska Con right now, so he's hoping maybe to give me something next week.
Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it it's hard to try and cater to everybody. You know, you're not going to win that battle. Um, I, w I would say if, if you're doing something to the that we can use in November, um, as long as it's the sooner the better, of course, well, since I'm trying to plan and figure out what's going to fit where. But um, I, I would say no later than maybe three days before November 1st. Um, just that way I can have all of my ducks in a row and make sure I have everything ready. Because I'm sure once this kicks off, um, I'm going to have a very busy November. <laughs> But there has been a, uh, a a pretty awesome response to to Nova Render. I'm kind of surprised that no one's ever, you know, tried to do something like this, or if they they did, I don't know. I didn't hear about it. But uh, yeah, the response has been pretty pretty overwhelming. It's been really great. You know, my own art page has I don't know less than 70 likes or followers or whatever but uh the November no render page has only been up for a little over a day now and it's almost at a hundred followers um everyone seems to love the idea um a lot of colorists you know we get to watch it inktober happen and go but what about me that looks like fun i just don't draw <laughs> so i think this is going to be really cool and I've been able to get some fantastic artists um, to donate some really awesome line art uh, that's just going to really make this whole thing a lot of fun for everybody, I think. So now that I have the, the big chunks of this flatted, now I can go in, highlight all of the gray, and then move in and start doing the finer flatting details here.
Yeah, yeah. It can be tedious. Sometimes you can get kind of zen into it and just kind of just zone out and do it, but yeah, when you're eager to just get to the rendering, it can be a little painstaking. But that's okay. I'm definitely not feeling that way now. I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying going over it with you. But yeah, if you know, like I said, if I was doing this uh, as a commission on a deadline of any kind, I would definitely just, you know, pay someone 10 bucks and be done with it. <laughs> but typically when I do stuff for, for myself or for these streams, I'm doing all the flatting anyway. I just normally do the flatting during the day while I'm at my day job, uh, provided I have time. I think that's about it for all the leather bits and bobs. I think all the rest of that is metal. Yeah, I'll look up reference later. The sweater is going to be a pain because it has some red stripes in it, but they're not really defined um, in this line art. Oh, those Ohuhu markers? Yeah, you're really going to like those, I think. material. Freddy Krueger, where are ya? Yeah. Hey, it all just depends on who's doing them movie-wise. 
and what his claws and stuff are made of. Big, bright, bold colors, bold lines. Oh yeah, for sure. When you're doing your uh, line art, like traditionally on paper, um, what are you doing for for your lines? Are you using uh, markers? Are you using like some sort of micron pen, or what you doing? Yeah, my crowns are awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of my left hand artist friends say the same thing. <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine does a lot of uh, leather work and he's left handed. So he made himself a, um, what do you call it, like a, uh, like a portfolio, like a binder, a leather binder, but all the sleeves that you put like the calculator and the pencil and the notepad on are flipped. That way he can do it left-handed. Oh yeah, having to start stuff over because of smudges and smears, that's a pain. Yeah, a light board is an absolute must if you're gonna do um, inking of any kind or uh, you know any sort of tracing over sketches and stuff especially if you're using you know thicker card stock like you know any sort of like bristol board or wallet watercolor papers or anything like that
Oh, okay, that makes sense. A curse. <laughs> Back in the old days, they would have said it was the devil that made you left-handed and forced you to use your right hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can definitely do that. <laughs> uh, another thing you can do is uh, a lot of time at like you know uh, arts and crafts stores, you can buy like small little panes of glass. Um, some people use them for etching or you know whatever, but you can get those small little panes and um, set them on uh, something else, or you can even if you have a glass table top. Um, but get like a flashlight and just turn it on and set it underneath the, the glass table or the glass pane. Yeah, or a flashlight under a clear plastic bin. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> but luckily, light boards aren't too pricey. They're one of the more I guess you'd say, uh, you know, like manageable prices as far as art supplies go. Now, if you want one with like an adjustable dimmer and all of that stuff, I mean, they can get pretty damn expensive, but just wanted to get the job done. Yeah, you can get them for pretty cheap. All right. So, that's flatted now. That's flatting in a nutshell. So now that that's all flatted, I'll save that to a separate layer and then do all of my colors on top. Now there are plenty of artists out there that they like doing all of their work on one layer and that's fine if that's the way you like to work but should you ever be working with an editor on anything and they come back and say hey you know that looks really great but can you change the color of you know that hat well if you've done all your shading and your lighting and all of that well, guess what? You're starting over. <laughs> you're starting over, or at least over on that hat. But if you're working in layers, all you gotta do is just select that separate layer and go in, boom, change the color of the hat, move on your way, and all of your shadows and lights, if they're on separate layers as well, they'll still apply and you don't have to redo it all. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it to to a point. I mean, if you're if you're doing something traditionally, you know, you can't really go back and you know hit the undo button or anything like that, and you know, happy accidents occur, and that's okay too. But if you're working in a digital platform why not give yourself the benefits of being able to go in and edit things on the fly you know if an editor needs that hat colored I can turn around and do that and get it back to them all in five minutes or less but if I was doing it all traditionally well give me you know a few hours or whatever and I'll get it back to you it makes a big difference in the eyes of an editor that's trying to push a deadline
All right, cool. I'm going to take a quick break here. I will be back shortly, and we'll actually start moving into the color rendering and painting portion. Catch you in a few.
Okay, I'm back. Restroom break and a grab a water and a quick smoke. Yeah, working in layers digitally um, is a little bit different, but once you get the hang of it, it's it's nice. And then you get into all the different layer modes, and that can be a little daunting at first till you get the hang of it. But to just jump right in, you don't really need to bother with a lot of that stuff right away. my layers in order here. And this is why I do a silhouette layer, so I can just select everything. Well, good. I'm glad. I, I love sharing knowledge, and you know, when when I was starting out, I I have a lot of creative friends, but I don't have any artist friends really. Um, when it comes to you know, coloring or illustrating or anything like that, so I had to learn the hard way trial and error um, you know a lot of YouTube tutorials Skillshare classes Facebook groups and uh, you know not having someone to actually talk to and kind of bounce some of those things from and go well why this over this you know I didn't have a lot of that um, at one point I, I threw my hands up in the air and was like I need some help if someone is willing to talk to me uh, that would be great and uh, this guy, John Ursek, who is a, a fantastic painter, um, was like, I got you, man. And for like a couple of months, he gave me some, some lessons and explained some things to me that just just set me off and, and made things click for me in a way that I could take it from there. And having someone to, to talk to and bounce those things off of is is fantastic so yeah I got you girl I'm here uh, anytime I'm doing a live stream or you know you want to reach out to me on Facebook if I got the time I'm more than happy to go over anything you want but again um, yeah this is why I, I like to do a silhouette layer um, as well as my flat so I can select the entire thing and then I'll come in with my shadow and I can just boom drop my shadow across the entire thing and now it becomes more of a subtractive process from here because I can go in and start removing shadow where I want light and there's no right or wrong way to do any of this this is just the way I've been doing it lately But I know I want the light coming from the upper left hand side. So we'll just kind of come in. And 
cut some of that out. Yeah, I don't like that. We'll paint it. Let's paint it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, so that goes back into layer modes. There is a layer mode called Multiply. And what that does it'll, is it'll take uh, a color that you overlay and it'll actually blend it so you get different colors. Um, here, I'll show you an example. So if we go in and we make whoop, a yellow dot and then we go to our multiply layer and we use blue it'll layer those two colors together whereas if I didn't do it on if I did that on a normal layer the blue would just overlay it now you can overlay and then adjust the opacity so you have that option as well but multiply automatically makes it a darker value so it's great for shadows Oh, I'm sure it is.
This face is going to be brutal. So many divots and pockmarks and burn scars and ugh. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know procreate. So I'm not sure what it's referencing to. I imagine a quick Google search on procreate multiply layer would probably get you where you need.
No, this isn't a commission. I just try and do a live stream um, every Wednesday. Um, I was so busy with uh, way busier than I thought I'd be with no render uh, set up yesterday um, that I just didn't have the time. Um, I thought, you know, reaching out to a bunch of different artists and stuff was going to take a, a lot longer and be more of a battle, but there was such an interest in it that I wasn't prepared for that I ended up just being really busy yesterday. Um, typically, if I'm doing any sort of commission work, um, it depends. It depends on the project. It depends on, you know, who I'm working with. But I might not be able to even live stream something like that. Um, last week I was working on a commission, and I did. I was able to do a live stream, uh, a portion of that. So that was good. But I was on a deadline, so I ended up not live streaming the second half because I had to get it in, which is another reason why I don't typically live stream stuff that uh, I'm commissioned on, because I don't know if I'll be able to get it all done. But like this, if I don't finish this tonight, which I, I doubt I will, but if I don't finish it tonight, I'll live stream the second part next week. That way you can see the process from beginning to end, and I can stitch it together and do a time lapse of the entire thing, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I have a buddy who he he doesn't He's not an illustrator or anything like that, but every now and again he'll just watch the live stream just because he'll be doing stuff around the house or whatever, and just kind of watching can be kind of zen-like. Just watching the color just kind of do its thing and take form. And <laughs> My wife, uh, you know, she'll hang out and watch the live stream while she's doing other things. Old Mr. Swiss Cheese face here.
Hey, what's up, cuz? No, I, uh, I'm not an illustrator. I, I don't typically draw too much. Uh, I'm a colorist, though. Yeah, thanks. I start off with stuff that looks like that. Then I go in and make it look dope. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Art is definitely therapeutic. Dude, that series on Netflix, the movies that made us, and then there's the, also the one that's the, the toys that made us. Those things are so awesome. <laughs> what are you up to tonight? You're not out tearing up the town? It is still early. I guess it's only 8.30. Going over to uh, Village Bar. <laughs> That's crazy that you guys go there. Years ago, I used to go there all the time. I have a buddy that lives right up the street from there. Oh, the waterbed exploding. Yeah, that's such a great scene. <clears throat> yeah, I might stop by. I'm usually done around 9 o'clock. I can maybe pop down and have a drink or two. I keep saying that I'm going to and I never do. But that's because I'm an old man. Oh, you live over there in Ralston? That's cool. Oh yeah, companies learned a long time ago to how to bank on nostalgia, that's for sure. Wow, 
Well, how's about this? I promise I will show up tonight and have a couple of drinks with you guys. No, I'll be there tonight. No, I'll come out for your birthday, too. <laughs> Thanks for popping by the stream and saying hi. I appreciate it. Peace. Yeah, the Freddy movies and uh, Jason and Halloween. I was raised on those movies. I was watching them at ages that I should not have been. <laughs>
Where do I draw inspiration from? Um, it's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> it, it could really be anything, everything. Um, especially, especially since I started uh, dedicating all of my time and effort to being a colorist. Um, I see things in a different way now. Like, if I'm, it's something as simple as if I'm out at a bar and, you know, you have like a, a dimly lit bar, but you have a really cool neon light glowing over here and it's reflecting on someone's face, I'll notice that now. So something like that will inspire me. Um, but as far as like, you know, why did, you know, like, when I select things to, to render, a lot of it's just the stuff that I'm into, you know comic book stuff, horror theme stuff. Um, that, 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 that's about it, but what inspires me is just seeing things in a way that I didn't see them before and identifying it for what it is and trying to remember that and then put it into practice. Um, seeing other artists do things is a, is a pretty big inspiration. Um, it took a long time for me to see it that way, especially in the beginning, because it felt like Almost like uh, I'll, I'll never be able to, to do what they're doing or anything like that. But you got to remind yourself that it's not a race and it's not a competition. And uh, you can look at somebody that is just crushing it out there and be inspired by that rather than being beaten up by it by going, I'll never achieve that level. <laughs> I will say, uh, you know, cartoons from the 80s and 90s are a big inspiration as well, and especially when I was younger. Uh, I've been an artist my whole life, and I, I can draw. I just choose not to. I like color a little bit better now nowadays. But, um, but yeah, I used to want to be a cartoonist for years and years and years. Did I pick up anything from your pieces? Oh. No, not at all. You're definitely not someone that likes, you know, uh, you know, awesome anime or anything. <laughs> who is working on something for Novrender who is also big into anime and big into drawing you know like furries and mascots and stuff like that which uh, which is interesting uh, it's not not necessarily my bag I can appreciate the art and a lot of that stuff and I like to color a lot of it especially like the furry stuff I like to color because you're getting to do like fur textures 
and stuff like that is always really fun just because it's different how you approach different things. I haven't done a lot of um, a lot of coloring for anime um, now that I'm talking about it so I think I need to I think I need to make myself do that No, I don't I don't feel any pressure at all. I just a horrible multitasker. Where are we at? Let's zoom out and take a look. Yeah, we're getting there. It's starting to look like something. In these little live streams I tend to rush a lot more just so I can fit more stuff in, but it's okay. That's not what I want. What do I want? Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. I think we will play around with some texture here. And if you've noticed at all, I've this entire time, aside from the flatting, I've only been doing subtractive work. I'm not adding anything to this. I layered the whole thing in a shadow, and this entire time. I've just been going in and removing shadow to reveal where the light is hitting. It's all been subtractive up to this point. It is that, and you know the the style of color rendering and stuff is known as cell shading, uh, and it's because of the anime. And I haven't really done a whole lot of that. I have a I tend to have a more painterly approach, maybe a little comic booky, but I, I really need to delve into the anime stuff. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll color some of your stuff soon. <laughs> What's up, Michelle? You you approve of the Freddy Krueger? Is that what you're saying? But yeah, maybe, uh, you know, once you get a little more comfortable with digital art and stuff, I'll do some of your, uh, I'll color some of your stuff just for the hell of it. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, there, there's a delay from the chat versus the time, uh, the buffer loads. So it seems like I'm responding in a weird way.
like that texture. garbage too. No. Just playing around with some textures here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, 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 I want to do a coloring book too. I mean, like I said, I can draw. Um, I don't know if you've checked out my merch store at all, but all that stuff that's there, that's all stuff I've drawn. And I wanted to be a cartoonist for years. I think doing a coloring book would be awesome. Alright, so now... Now we've got all of that. We'll go ahead and pick a light color. funky whatever all right well, now we're going to go in and add our light source or the color of our light so same with multiply i'm doing this on a layer mode this layer mode is called hard light and it'll, it does the opposite of what multiply does when you add multiply to something it decreases the value of it and blends it that way. Hard light does the opposite. It takes it 
up in value. We may finish this, or at least be good enough. Now once I've done my shadows, and I've done my light source, then what I'll do is I'll come in with another layer, and I'll do either, you know, some sort of a, what's called a screen layer. That's what that does. Or I'll do a glow layer. you got to be careful with a glow, because that'll put some hot spots on there to be too bright but that's where you can go in and add in little highlights where the highlights would be like the planes of the face would be hit where the light would be the brightest or the most reflective See how it all it comes together pretty quickly once you get those basic layers down as far as shadow and start subtracting things. But now that I've done the Stuff. Words are hard. What is the word I'm looking for? Highlight. Oh my goodness. So now that I've done, started with the shadow, then I've subtracted where the light's going to hit. 
and then the next layer I go in and I add what the color of the light is and then I go in and I'll add highlights and now I'm going to go in and add some more highlights to the metal to hopefully make it feel more like metal. Just slowly doing layer upon layer upon layer until you get what you're looking for. I was talking before the beauty about working in layers being able to change things on the fly I noticed the color that I made this glove mixed with the shadows is making it come out a little too dark so I'm going to go in and try and lighten that up by just making the glove a lighter color of brown Are you familiar with what color holds are or the term? So color holds are when a colorist will go in and actually color the line art. And that's what a color hold is. Now you, this is something that you want to use sparingly and only in the right times and places because you really don't want to mess up someone else's line art. They've spent all that time on it. But when I find when it comes to very bright lights or metal, placing a color hold in a couple of places will really give off that effect that it's shining. Because when something like metal is shining and you look on the edge of it, you'll notice you don't really see much of a hard edge. That's because that light is bouncing right off that edge and into your eye. 
and just touch this up a little bit here with some color holds and you'll see what I'm saying. It should make this look a little more metallic or that it has a shine to it. that back out. Now that claw, at least to me, looks like it has a little more of a metallic feel. Just, just in a couple of spots. Even we'll see how this works. Put a little shine on there. Something to draw the eye to. I don't think I like that in the eyes. Yeah, it looks too weird.
There we go. Almost wrapped up here, running a little over from what I would like, but that's okay. I'm having fun. Just do a little more texture in the skin here. There we go. That's it. We're done. Start to finish in about two hours. Pretty pleased with how it turned out. Hopefully you learned some things. Hopefully uh, you were entertained. Uh, the conversation's great. I enjoyed it. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up from here. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you want to know anything you know feel free to message me on any social media and I got you have a good night